SDB. Um, we will now call on the chairperson of the University of the Gambia Governing Council. After his speech, his statement, we will allow Jaliba Kuyate uh, to give us his gift. He has a gift, you know, for the education sector. Governor, um, chairperson, please. Mr. Chancellor, Your Excellency, President of the Republic of the Gambia, Adam Abaram, Minister of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, and all other ministers here present, Chief of Staff, Your Excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, Venerable Religious Leaders, the Governor, West Coast Region, Usman Ojem, Sefo Bakari Sanya of Combo East and all Royal Fathers here present, Alcalo Omar Kujabi of Farababanta and heads of neighboring villages, members of the Governing Council, Vice Chancellor and staff of the UTG, students, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my immeasurable pleasure an exceptional honor to welcome you on behalf of the Governing Council to the Faraba Banta campus of the University of the Gambia. Today's inauguration celebrates one of the most foresightful endeavors in the development of higher education in our country, the Gambia. It is therefore good to be here and you are all most welcome. Let me extend a warm hand of welcome to the representatives of our funding partners, Great Fund, OPEC Fund, Saudi Fund, Badia and Islamic Development Bank. As a council, we have had interactions with the consultants and contractors on several visits during the construction. We thank Pace Consulting and Sapoji Palonji for their perseverance and eventual delivery of these iconic structures. Your Excellency, the transfer to this beautiful location has been exciting, even in the face of challenges relating to some prerequisites for normal university campus life and operations. Issues with cafeteria and health services accommodation for students and staff, recreational areas, campus security and emergency services are living realities with us. What efforts are being made to resolve them or prevent them from being disrupted? The Governing Council and Money appreciate the fact that these students and staff have embraced the move with patience and a positive attitude, and have not allowed temporary difficulties to detract from the amazing benefits that the new campus offers. On behalf of the Governing Council, students, management, and staff, I thank most profusely our Chancellor, His Excellency President Adam Obaro, and his government for the execution of this project. We are also grateful and we appreciate the contributions of the financing partners to the completion of this phase of the campus development. This campus, with all its modern facilities, brings together the largest portion of the UTG community that gives everyone, management, staff and students, a feel of university life they have not had before. But the continued enjoyment of the fruits of this physical largesse depends on how responsibly we utilize it and the extent to which we preserve or enhance the original plant. That task is a shared obligation of all parties in the university community. 
Your Excellency, let me say that the Governing Council takes full responsibility for the proper upkeep of this campus and will ensure that all stakeholders play their part in the realization of that commitment. As the highest oversight body within the university, the Governing Council will carry out an annual and detailed inspection tour of the campus in addition to receiving from management regular reports on operations and the state of the physical environment. On their part, management will judiciously execute the annual maintenance budget for the campus to prevent a deterioration of the facility or interruption of services essential for the smooth conduct of academic work and the sustenance of health. As principal beneficiaries, students have the greatest stake in the optimal running of this beautiful complex, and they bear an equally bigger duty in sustaining it at this speed. It is expected that toilet facilities, furniture and fixtures, library books and, li and laboratory and other equipment will be handled with care and civility. Littering, this indiscriminate, throw away anywhere mentality, one of our biggest national weaknesses should be taboo here. So much so that the cleaners should be expected to sweep nothing other than leaves and not pieces of paper and plastic bags and wrappers. This place should be a national center of excellence for good conduct and good habits. Your Excellency, there is a tendency to copycat in matters of campus activity, but it is hoped that at no point in the venting of their dissatisfaction with any aspect of national life would students or any other group for that matter resort to the vandalization of this magnificent edifice. It should be clear from the beginning that any action to destroy university property will be most unacceptable and will attract the heaviest punishment for those involved. Rustication shall be the minimum penalty against vandals and anarchists who should have no place in a civilized setting like this. We all have a patriotic responsibility to preserve these beautiful structures and their contents for our use and enjoyment and for those who come after us. Your Excellency, the layout of the campus conveniently sets up physically separated schools, mini campuses as it were. This provides the opportunity for healthy and positive competition among the schools over proper maintenance and environmental sustenance. In this regard, the Governing Council will consider an annual award for the best maintained and most environmentally friendly school. In its current state, this campus is a treasure trove, dream territory for exploitation by insightful environmentalists and landscapers to develop a showpiece eco-friendly heaven. I challenge the School of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences and the Built Environment and WASCAL to lead the transformation of this land into a modern Gambia Garden of Eden in terms of flora and some fauna. Our environment screams for special attention and green up forever should be a battle cry in our climate change mitigated, mitigation effort. UTG must be positively unique as a pace setter in every aspect of our life as a nation. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we note with great satisfaction that the inaugural pa package goes beyond buildings. It includes other key facilities. A modern complex like this cannot serve its full purpose 
without a reliable and adequate electricity supply. Also, as they say, water is life, and clean water means a healthy life. Both these needs have been taken into consideration and provided for. The wastewater treatment plant opens up another avenue for resourceful thinking, and I hope plants will be put in place to recycle the residue from the process for productive use. Then there is the suite of state-of-the-art instructional material and a central library with all the latest facilities. This is no surprise, considering that the Minister of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology was Acting Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academic in charge of teaching and learning before his elevation. He has a thorough understanding and appreciation of the needs of the university. Professor Gomez has been a relentless driver in the actualization of the move to this campus. His, his coming added impetus to the zeal and enthusiasm of his predecessor, the late former Vice President Dr. Badara Eju, a man with a sharp and enigmatic intelligence. May the Almighty reward him for his services to education in the Gambia. Your Excellency, work on Lot 1 took a considerably long time, but all the indications are that Lot 2, whose foundation stone you will lay today, will be executed in a much shorter period. In fact, work on aspects of this phase have already started. At this rate, we cannot be blamed if we are overzealously optimistic in our expectations. We thank you, Your Excellency, for richly feeding our dream for much bigger things. As we peer through this clearing vista of a fully fledged campus in the next two years to the vision of a vibrant university town at the nearest horizon. Your Excellency, we will continue to believe. Finally, let me take this opportunity to officially announce our presence at the University of the Gambia in the Combo East District. We want to thank the Alcalo for his very warm words of wisdom and uh, we ensure that we are most welcome. To the Alcalo, of Farababanta and the SEFO, we said that we have come to live as permanent residents. We want to assure you that we will be good members of this community. We will take your good name to the ends of the earth and hope that our presence will inspire your youth in this district. In the way of tradition, we have brought, as they say, Kuro and in Silafan, as we ask for your acceptance and blessing. With your permission, Your Excellency, we'll call on the Alcalo and the Chief to receive our gift from the University. In the traditional way, say acceptance. Thank you all for your attention.
Thank you, uh, the chairperson. We would now have the gift from Jaliban. Um, we would be doing this for about 10 minutes.
dunia gonna be in a badala bad man won't be able to live ya when i look to come my and the animal and the bad Bye. 
the world. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. the laying of the foundation stone uh, with a short visit you know to the school of business and public administration um, before i call on the head of state and the president of the republic of the gambia we have a, a gift you know from uh, Pui, you know to deliver to his excellency the president. Okay. Okay, I've been reliably informed that the gift has already been given. Um, now I will take this honor, you know, to call on the President of the Republic of the Gambia to make his inaugural speech. Your Excellency. Thank you. Honorable Minister of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology. Honorable Cabinet Ministers, our esteemed partners and supporters. Senior Government Officials and Service Chiefs, Chairperson and Members of the UTG Governing Council, Vice Chancellor and UTG staff, the Governor of West Coast Region, distinguished personalities, residents of Faraba and Pira. Ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Minister Professor Per Gomez, I once heard you saying on TV that moving to Faraba is irreversible. That statement is confirmed today. It's a big congratulations to you and the entire government. I think this is a big achievement in the history of education in this country. The project is a landmark project, it's a historic project. So I congratulate every one of you for this achievement. As the saying goes, all is well that ends well. After years of hard work, we have finally overcome huge challenges to gather here to inaugurate Lord One of the University of the Gambia Farba Banta Campus project. This is the story of a long journey to provide the faculty and students of our national pride a permanent campus. Today, 
they have a magnificent campus where they can focus on educational pursuits. No longer do they have to worry about where to hold classes, access resource materials, or use suitable equipment for academic work. At last, after 24 years of existence, the UTG can boast of a permanent home. The bitter experience of moving around between rented halls and temporary classrooms or attending classes on the trees is now history. We thank and praise Allah, the Almighty, for this groundbreaking achievement. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at the recent summit, the African Union recognized 2024 as the year of education. Member states significantly renewed their commitment to aligning their education systems with advanced socio-economic development. Remarkable as this declaration is for the African continent, my government has already paid attention to intricate link between education and socio-economic development. This was already reflected in our national development plans. While the declaration will strengthen our resolve in this endeavor, these impressive structures will add glamour to the performance of the UTG. Beside uplifting the image of the university as a learning center to reckon with, the campus complements or a lot of initiatives in the education sector. With all these sector developments and successes, it is certain that, as stipulated in the IRWA plan 2023-2027, my government is taking giant development strides. We are steadily and radically transforming the country's post-secondary education training, giving the urgent need to increase youth employment and fight poverty. The government has boldly embraced a robust transformation strategy for the higher education system. This new strategy is, by, is being piloted at the University of Applied Sciences, Engineering and Technology, UCEL. Through the World Bank supported Africa Centers of Excellence project, chiefly the strategy has innovation and entrepreneurship components set within three engineering programs. Apart from the new and upgraded tertiary institutions to deliver degree programs, government has also procured state-of-the-art equipment to support performance. Some of the items were unveiled during the last made the people talk. To sustain the programs, we are training more Gambians at PhD level, and we refocus subsequent projects to intensify their drive. I call on the relevant educational institutions to work with the Accreditation Authority for compliance and implementation of the sector policies. Ladies and gentlemen, to augment skills training, my administration is determined to establish well-resourced TVET centers in all the regions of the country. The centers will be linked to yourself. As planned, two TVET centers of excellence, a multi-purpose center in Demban, and one on agri-business in Sapu 
will be established through World Bank support. Together with research, the centers will be supported with innovation and entrepreneurship hubs. This indicates how serious we are and how far we have gone towards transforming education and training at home. Because there is an obvious link between research and higher education. We will open the resource library today. It is to serve as a critical enabler of the education process on campus. The library will surely bring the UTG closer to other universities and research institutions in the South and generally the global research and education community. In opening the library, we are facilitating access to countless research and instructional materials for the UTG. Recognizing the invaluable service of the late Vice President to the nation and education sector, the Resource Center is here by name Dr. Badara Ali Uju Lyle. Mr. Vice Chancellor, we expect the UTG to take the lead in curricular reform to make education effectively responsive to the development needs of the country and beyond. My administration recently commissioned a consultancy to review the UTG curriculum through the Faraba Banta project. In this connection, I ask management to implement the report submitted by the University of Ibada. A certain that entrepreneurship and innovation are embedded in your training package. Distinguished personalities, these aside, the government has developed innovative financing mechanisms for poor secondary education and research. We have approved the establishment of three funding mechanisms top support development projects of tertiary and higher education institutions, fund research and innovation programs, increase access opportunities to affordable post-secondary education and training through a student's loan scheme. Our education is indeed a sole part to sustainable development. As such, we encourage our partners to collaborate with us and support this human capital formation process via these initiatives. I plead that we accelerate our pace of development so that what we miss in the past is acquired in the shortest possible time. It is for this reason that despite all the implementation bottlenecks, we ensure at all costs that this Faraba campus project took off the ground in 2017. I am grateful that through the Ministry of Higher Education we successfully engage our donors. They willingly absorb the government's contribution to the project and split the package into two lots. This is why we are inaugurating Lot 1 today. In addition to the library, it consists of the four important school, schools mentioned earlier. We will lay the foundation stone for this lot shortly. The university community is advised to take proper care of this splendid campus. It is a national duty for all implementing agencies to care and sustain the government structures and programs in their custody. Doing so amounts to civil behavior and courtesy towards society. To promote such virtues, we hold the university responsible for transmitting its core values of knowledge, trust, and development. You must therefore prepare your students civilly, contribute to national 
development. On behalf of all Gambians, I thank our partners, ISDB, Kuwaiti Phone, Badia, Saudi Phone, and Ophir, for taking this long journey with us. While we thank you all for your patience and trust in the Gambia, we look forward to working with you on the conditional package. To recall, this package takes on board the School of Medicine and Allied Health Science and its program, such as medicine and surgery, dentistry and pharmacy. To this effect, the Ministry of Finance and Higher Education are tasked to mobilize the necessary resources. Ladies and gentlemen, sincere gratitude is due to the Pan-African Consulting and Engineering Agency for their excellent consulting services. PCU and Sapoji Pology Engineering and Construction, we applaud them for the imposing structures and state-of-the-art facilities. The Honorable Minister of Higher Education and his team we are quite instrumental in ensuring that Lord One is successfully delivered. I thank them abundantly. Hopefully, we shall complete Lord Two next year. It is consistent of the Chancery and Faculty of Law and the School of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences. As host of the UTG family here, we are thankful to the Governor's Office and the communities of Farba and Piran for their support and understanding. The Brighter Future and MRC Holland Foundation will very soon begin construction of the dormitories for both students and staff. Their philanthropy is truly formidable. Hence, every Gambian ought to remain grateful to them. Through my office, the government and the people convey sincere gratitude to our partners. They include the U.S. government, the European Union, the Chinese government, the government of South Korea, the World Bank Group, the Republic of Turkey, UNESCO, and all those involved in our educational transformation endeavor. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite you to join me in officially inaugurating Lord One of the UTGB Faraba Campus. I thank you for your attention.